Hi, I'm Kirk Jowers, and I'm pleased to host this March 16th episode of COVID-19 with Dr. Russell Osgathorpe. Russ, you've been at the hospital all day. Thank you for taking the time to do this. You must be exhausted, but you look pretty good. Thanks. My pleasure. Good to be with you. Um, we will start with the graphic from the World Health Organization. There are now 168,019 confirmed cases, 6,610 deaths, and 148 countries with cases. And as a potentially significant turning point, there are now more cases of the virus outside of China than within. Yep. Uh, the phrase of the day is flatten the curve. All of these stories seem to, to rotate around that phrase. Europe is now the global epicenter of the virus, according to the World Health Organization. The Italians remain essentially under house arrest. Germany is sealing its borders. Mm -hmm. The Netherlands has ordered all schools, bars, restaurants, and cafes closed. Wow. Similar measures are also in force in France, the Czech Republic. Austria is prohibiting gatherings of more than five people. The list goes on and on. What are you seeing, Russ? In Spain, <laughs> we've had a national lockdown that's gone into effect. Britain's health secretary has recently asked that people over 70 avoid going uh, outside and stay at home. And Canada recently closed its borders to everyone except Canadian citizens and permanent residents. In the United States, the CDC has recommended gatherings of 50 people or more be canceled or postponed. And just before we came on, the White House has further reduced the number to 10, as well as provided many other uh, guidelines for us to follow. Um, on Sunday, the U.S. Federal Reserve cut interest rates to essentially zero to try to ward off another really bad stock day. It didn't work immediately. U.S. stocks plunged. The Dow tumbles nearly 3,000 points, the worst point drop in history. Businesses are, of course, affected. Many retailers, including Nike, Apple, and REI, are temporarily closing their retail stores. Um, in the United States, following President Trump's recommendations, operations of bars and restaurants are being limited, and hotels, resorts are announcing closures. Airlines have slashed their flight schedules and are asking for government assistance now in the United States. And there are multiple cruise ships that are stranded looking for port. It's pretty astounding. On any one of these, we could focus for a half hour on the implications and why, but I want to get to, I think, what is the unique benefit of having you with us is to, to help us understand a few things each day. Um, sure. Let's start with China. Yesterday, it was reported they had only 20 new cases. Yeah. Dramatic downturn from thousands of new infections a day. So is China largely past the COVID-19 fears? What can we learn from Chinese, China's timeline for the rest of us? There have been a lot of headlines that, and folks talking about China being through the worst of it. Um, we have seen this dramatic drop in positives out of Wuhan province and Hubei, and I think that's very positive and is largely due to the measures that the public health sector in China and government have used to flatten the curve there. And so this is evidence that social distancing and flattening the curve actually works. Do we expect it to stay down? Is China like, okay, one's down, or a, is it going to happen again there? That's a great question. I would say that because coronavirus or COVID-19 is new, we don't really know what's going to happen next. But you asked me because of what's happened in the past with pandemics. The most applicable for me would be what happened in 2009 with the H1N1 pandemic. Um, with that pandemic, there were measures that were instituted worldwide to try and slow the spread of the virus, nothing to the scale that like we have done with COVID-19. But we tried to limit the spread of H1N1 and it worked. But instead of this nice kind of flat curve that we see idealized in so many graphs, right. in 2009 H1N1, most countries experienced multiple peaks of illness throughout the year. Mm. I'm not sure if that's what will happen in China, but if you're asking for my opinion, based on the fact that a large, well, the whole Earth's population is susceptible right. for the most part to this virus, I would expect there to be multiple outbreaks of the virus throughout the year. And that as we both institute and then relax social distancing or public health measures to slow the spread of the virus, when we relax, the virus will kind of flare. Hmm. Um, and we will see secondary outbreaks of the virus, even in populations where we've 
seen a decrease. Yeah. Um, but that's my opinion. I'm not sure if everyone shares it, but we've, we saw that with 2009 H1N1. It's comparing apples and oranges, but it's the best we've got. Well, on that front, um, some of the big medical news over the weekend is that infected people without symptoms might be driving the spread of coronavirus more than we realized. What do we know there? Well, there are limited reports coming out of virology labs suggesting that people who become infected can shed the virus before they get symptoms of the virus. And that becomes problematic uh, because if we can spread the virus, so shedding and spreading are not the same thing, right? but if you can spread the virus or infect others, if your ability to transmit the virus occurs before you have symptoms of the virus, then social distancing is um, not as effective. However, we know from China, based on what they've done, that social distancing is working. So I believe that you are most effective at spreading the virus when you are most symptomatic. Okay. And these reports of being able to spread the virus when you are asymptomatic are real. We need to digest them and understand them. But right now, I think the lion's share of spreading of the virus is occurring when people are symptomatic. Small amounts of transmission of the virus will occur potentially before you're symptomatic, matic, symptomatic and after your symptoms have resolved. But for the most part, it's gonna be right in the middle when you have that fever and cough and shortness of breath. Big question is, will the prevalence of the coronavirus naturally dissipate once the weather gets warmer? And a, a side question is, can it even thrive in, in warm, hot weather? I've seen those reports. Uh, I'm not so certain that warm weather will decrease the spread of the virus. What may decrease the spread of the virus is the fact that many of our institutions like school will close in the summertime and we'll see smaller groups of people coming together all the time instead of groups of, or classrooms of 30 will be at home and roughly playing in smaller groups, less than 10, for example, all summer long. In 2009, we saw a summertime outbreak of illness and it went against the, the grain of our normal influenza outbreak that we normally experience every winter in both the Southern and Northern hemispheres. But I don't know the answer to your question, Kirk. I would say that we hope that warmer weather will decrease transmissibility because the virus is an enveloped virus. And if the virus lands on a surface and it's really hot in the middle of the summer that the virus will immediately die, quote unquote, and not be able to infect others. Uh, but we don't know yet, and we'll find out as time moves on. The second question is, um, in an earlier episode, you had mentioned that there's not yet a medical cure for COVID-19 as a mm -hmm. novel coronavirus, but uh, are there home remedies available that can cure or prevent the, the virus? No. Right now, to the best of our understanding, there are not any methods of curing COVID-19 or treating COVID-19 other than social distancing and preventing yourself from getting infected. It is important to remember that most people who get infected, even after we've started looking at the outbreaks that have occurred in Asia, we are seeing that most folks who get infected have mild disease. Like most coughs and colds, there are not real proven remedies to treat coronavirus. Thank you. And finally, uh, you mentioned some new research finding on kids and COVID-19. What are you learning there? Yeah, we're learning that um, in a study that is in preprint uh, for children out of the Chinese outbreak, we saw that kids were definitely infected with the virus and that they could transmit the virus, that the vast, vast, vast majority of them had mild disease. Um, and that person-to-person -person transmission was effective in children. And uh, those are really good epidemiologic points for us to understand about coronavirus, which indicate that social distancing works yeah. at helping to slow the spread of the virus. Well, thank you so much. Any final advice for today? No, try and combat um, panic with information and kindness to one another. Take care of each other and be kind to one another. It's, uh, we'll have to be patient as we go through this. It's probably, as we've heard from other world leaders, gonna get worse before it gets better. 
And that means that we just need to take care of each other as we go through it. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.